Welcome to Les Talk Geek, episode 93, recorded the 16th of May, 2012. In the show, we talk about lightsabers with real lasers. We talk about Diablo 3 going live, great fun, just one or two problems. We also talk about the HTC One X, awesome, awesome phone, and what to not to do when uh, doing a live broadcast. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 93. Uh, in the show this week, we have... I'm Gerrit Vermeulen. Jan Vermeulen. Tim Hogg. Johan Els. Cool, and with that, we're going to go directly into our random. 93 is the code for international direct dial phone uh, course to Afghanistan. That's plus 93. Yeah. Cool. So if you have anybody out there, you now know how to phone them. Will they answer? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, also into events, uh, things happening. House for Hack has an Arduino course on the Saturday, running from 9 till 1. Uh, 600 Rand, uh, with that you get your Arduino kit and everything else you need. Uh, if you already have your Arduino and some of the kit stuff, you can pay 200 Rand less. Um, also, coming up next week is Men in Black. Oh, oh, oh. So, where is this course going to be held? In, is this House for Hack in Centurion. Uh, I've actually done one of the previous courses, so I'm assuming this is the same introductory yeah. or similar introductory course to Arduino. It's really cool, really fun to hack with, and they give you, like Tim said, uh, the kit is quite comprehensive, and uh, they, they get it, I mean, they, they give it to you for cheap at pretty much the price that they buy it. More detail. House for Hack, Check I guess. House for Hack, we're going to put, put the topics, in, uh, the directions, everything in the show notes. Mm. Check out their um, blog as well. About, they've got it, very cool things that they're doing. I know I'm going to be there. I've already signed up and paid. Cool. So looking forward to it. It's good fun. I'm playing Diablo 3. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> to that. Get to you. That. Yeah, well, my friends have been wanting to do this for such a long time because I really want to learn about Arduinos and how they work. And I've just been busy every single other time. So this is the first time. It's like Diablo. It was like this morning. Work Diablo. Work Diablo. <laughs> I think that was a toss up for many people. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to work. Yeah, we all did. All right, topics. Uh, first topic, I get corrected. Well, oh. first things, wait, 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 before we move on, uh, stardates.co.za for further events. Yes. Some stuff that's listed there in addition to the Men in Black uh, launch is... What do you think? How's the movie going to be? Men in Black. Thought I'm, travel. I'm, I'm, I'm holding thumbs that it's sort of like Matrix 3, that it, that it redeems that itself. No, no, no. The first one was brilliant. The second one... They only made we, one, Matrix. They only made one. <laughs> So I don't know what you're talking about. Two and three sucked. <laughs> Both sucked. Three was not sucked. Three was only not so bad because two, of you just two. Don't, exactly. It <laughs> redeems. I, I've got a rule. As soon as somebody messes with time travel, they've jumped the shock. Okay. But that's then we had three brilliant Back to the Futures. Yeah, but yes, the whole but premise that's, of the movie was... Yeah, exactly. If it's a premise, <laughs> then it works. Like, for example, Sliders, where okay. the whole premise is, you know, moving... And when you only have to make one assumption in a science fiction world to make it work... Or like, you know, like one base assumption, then things are cool. But like when you start looking at shows like Supernatural or mm. All My Children um, that, <laughs> that, that mess with... Days of your life. Time travel. <laughs> we don't look at days of our lives. They've, no, that's, what's they've that? not they've jumped the shot. Mentioned. <laughs> Time travel is a no-no. Okay. Okay. I'm just I'm bad. not do I'm it. still going to watch it. Yeah, I guess. You're, You're also going to watch, watch it. it. <laughs> Probably yes. not in theaters. I'll wait for it to come to SABC. No, I can't watch it. You're going to wait five years for that. <laughs> anyway, back, back to the topic. Uh, uh, um, comment, for, immediate comment from the IRC is that MIB will rock. Yeah. All right. So uh, and for other stuff, start out with today. Today, TV show Africa is in there. That's coming up uh, next week. Yeah, next week. So a couple other events. Yeah, I'll be I'll be there to cover it. So, uh, all right. Let's try this again. Yes, I, I get corrected. Uh, we got an email from email from Brian Tristan Williams. He's the guy that actually won our competition last year that we had. Um, and he corrected me. I said 32K for the ZX Spectrum. And it actually turns out it ran between, there was a 16228K, but the only ones I could find was a 16K or 40, 48K was the sl closest I could come, and 16K were, were the two that I could come closest to the 32K. So I'm assuming you must have had, had a, either the 128K version or the 48K version. I do apologize. Um, 
I'm sure the guys from ZX Spectrum is really upset with the fact that you had the specs for their unbelievable console from 19. We had one. That's the same. It's just one of those things. I had the number from my childhood. You just don't question it. Uh, but thank you so much to Brian for correcting us. It really, really is appreciated. Yeah. Um, that's how we get. And we've taken on this, Jen. Yeah, no, yeah. no, but all right, freely admit, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have done more research. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I mean, you get stuff wrong, especially yeah. esoteric stuff like this. So, no, cool. You can we really have to talk about the next topic? Yes, yes. Why? Because. Because <laughs> it's Diablo 3. Why would you not want to talk about this? Exactly. Uh, some of us have work. Where? But <laughs> you you don't care. So for you, it's not a limiting factor of having to be at work and wanting to play. Uh, I don't. I know both me and Jan have been playing it um, instead of sleeping. I so think. you've actually managed to connect to the servers. You haven't had any we'll of, get the, to that. of the wonderful bugs that <laughs> no, they, no, that I some have people have found. Oh, wow. I have screenshots. You had bugs, and uh, not bugs. I have screenshots of me trying to log into the game. Look, I, I know I was 70 to something and trying to do the midnight release when they mm -hmm. were releasing it because you could then log on to the UK servers. Meltdown. Not, 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 I tried for like 45 minutes and gave up. It was like, this, this, I'm going to be. This is a rant I wanted to do for my gaming, but then I just ended up playing the game instead. Um, so you got in? Yes, we got in. We actually played. I actually uh, bombed Tim's game and made him die. We found a bug. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make me die. Well, I, I jacked up the Skeleton King's difficulty. The Skeleton King is much harder in the actual release yes. game than yeah. it is in no, the beta. A lot of the beta. things are, I've actually died now twice, which yeah. I never, never happened in the beta. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there are differences between the release game and the beta. I've finally got past the point I where... I hope there are differences between the release and the beta. <laughs> yes, let's be pedantic. <laughs> well, but I mean, in the sections that were in the beta that are in the release game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I, I look, I'm also now further, so I'm not actually having a new storyline and it's going, and I'm actually enjoying a lot more yeah. now. How, um, a, a quick tip, because I went, I, I, while the game was installing, by the way, you can't just use the beta client, you have to get rid of it and install the, the release client, uh, which takes long. And um, I paged through my art book, I have the collector's edition, you know, to keep myself entertained, and I spoilered a very cool part of the story for myself. So now I've come across this character and I already know what's happening. Okay, I don't uh, know. I haven't read yeah, anything. Exactly. So do <laughs> not go through the art book. Do not watch the behind the scenes stuff until you finish the game. The only one we're going to talk about the screaming hordes of hamsters. There are screaming hordes, hordes of hamsters? No. Oh. Okay. okay. Like, it's a new <laughs> cow level. <laughs> about to say, wait, all what? Is that like the, the secret cow level? <laughs> it's like the new cow level. Anyway, um, I did want to speak about the DRM because... I don't know if you were, if you young whippersnappers Sucks. remember <laughs> back in 2008 when uh, Jay Wilson first indicated that they were not going to have land play for Diablo 3. Um, there were those of us who said that's a dumb idea and there are those of us who play single player and who play single player only characters who want to play the game with our yes. friends. Um, and there was a thriving single player community, a community, an online community. I know it sounds like contradictory but but it's so there's a forum dedicated to single player Diablo 2 players so these guys you know they, they enjoy doing it that way plus having input lag while you're trying to play your single player game sucks R I, running around I, I stopped I, playing I last night up. yeah I stopped playing last night when I get got to a certain stage I can't I don't want to say too much because it might spoil the stuff um, simply because like things were laggy and I was about to fight the mini boss <laughs> I don't want to fight the I, I, I did notice, just coming into this, we were playing uh, last night, I was playing a game, and I'd set my game up to be single player, going through it. Next thing, Jan popped up in my game. <laughs> um, and it was like, poof. Ow. Yeah, and there's literally a button I can click. Auto-join, Tim's game. Click. Because he's one of my Battle.net Real ID friends. Yeah. Handy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which turns out was a bug, um, and they had some other bugs. Other people were saying, I did notice when, when you were playing, you had a lot of lag on your game. Um, like, you just kept on timing out where with mine I, I, uh, every yeah. now and again I got a slight jitter but a not too and bad. you were smooth on my side it's the strangest thing so yeah no weird stuff still going down there thanks to mweb <laughs> I'm on mweb so we're so on the same what, what I'm hearing here is it's playing like a mamorpoga <laughs> except worse it, it is a bit um, at this stage because of the bad luck. so I must say I hate the fact that I'm connecting to the servers and playing via their servers because yeah, yeah. I'm playing the game I'm not playing against anybody else I, why should mm -hmm. it lag and at all? That was my exact argument, and that's why I'm not giving them my money. Yeah. I like the game, though. I, 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 I enjoyed money. playing the beta up until the point where it started playing like a Momopaga. 
<laughs> um, and then I realized I don't want this anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and I understand that and I respect that. I mean, the thing is, we do need to actually stand up to these guys. And the fact is, with Valve and with Blizzard, we just take it. We're just like, we love these guys' games. We love so what they do. stop buying it. Exactly. And that's why I didn't buy Assassin's Creed. I didn't buy any of the Assassin's Creed games. That's why I didn't buy the last Prince of Persia game. Yeah. The only Assassin's Creed game I played is the one I got with my PlayStation, which is River... River... Something. Cool. Um, anyway. Yeah. And, uh, yeah um, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> sure, sure. Um, one last thing about the DRM. Cast your minds back to 2008 when they first announced this. Then in 2009, they said there was going to be no offline mode. And we all said that it was a bad idea. And there was like, a, well, we all, there was a bunch of us who said it was a bad idea. And there was a bunch of folks who said, no, guys, this is Blizzard. Trust Blizzard. Well, you were wrong. And you should feel bad. Yes. Because this is Blizzard who have 10 million players in WoW. And they could not get their login servers to stand up on launch day. Turn for hat time. I wonder if, if how much of that isn't on purpose, so that it looks as if the game is busy. No, but there's more than that. I, I see that they even took the US servers offline last night uh, for an hour, like offline, mm. gone for an hour, quickly patching things up. And then it became three hours, by the way. No, no, there was two bits. There was uh, last night where they were having intermittent problems when we were playing. How many, how many players are we talking about here? How many people started playing last night? They didn't say. I mean, estimate. I mean, how but many? They must have known how many. So what you do is you ramp up more servers. And f but then, just give the guys okay. a break. No, no, no. We'll, if they we'll, still have this problem by next week Tuesday, then start ranting. Okay. We're not complaining <laughs> about that. We've complained if they had not done the DRM or I could play on my local PC. Okay. None of these problems would have existed. I've seen the. F I mean, I think that's why Pirate Pirate Bay is probably blocked today. But there's already a Pirate version out. So if you really want to, you've paid for the game. Get the Pirate version. Pirate, no, but Pirate Bay wasn't blocked. It was DDoS. Oh, was it DDoS? Yes. Oh, and they have their suspicions, and so do I. Okay. Yeah. Is this the Microsoft? Uh, <laughs> no, they, they, they insulted Anonymous a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> well, and there is. This it needed to be done, and what they said was fully right. Uh, but there, there's also this new tool that basically lets people DDoS. My well, DDoS is torrents, not torrent indexes. Never mind, I retract my statement. Um, it's talking about this, we're going to talk about the fact that Microsoft is basically funding a Russian company that's purporting that they are, can basically do a D DDoS on certain, it's for a specific torrent. So they'll go search for a specific movie and basically make it so, and I couldn't quite work out what they were talking about. It's almost like they're going to be doing a cash poisoning or a... It sounds like they're actually going to DDoS the seeds. Yeah. So um, that's what I was referring to. And that's when I realized that I, uh, talking about torrent, uh, you know, Pirate Bay, which is a torrent index, is wrong. They, they won't DDoS. They'll DDoS you, the user, you, the torrenter, not the index. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. It's, so basically, I mean, they've got your IP address. Mm -hmm. They know which port you're downloading on. Flood that thing. Boom. Yeah, but the problem is, if you get enough seeders, how do you stop everyone? So basically, and in cer certain countries, I can say that's hacking. And that's part of the that's part of the problem. Um, and there have been follow-up articles saying that this could be illegal. All right. Anyway, just a quick mention. Um, also, in the next story, which is Google updates Google Docs with 450 new fonts and 60 new templates. Uh, should we turn to our resident Google Docs aficionado? You, you may at all. Like I pointed out, it looks like uh, Google has launched a new thing called Web Fonts. Okay. And from this, uh, the screenshots in the video stream now. From this, there's a couple of hundreds of, I mean, now it says 501, because I think people are actually adding fonts as they go along. But now, because of this font library that's hosted on the Google network, they've now included all these fonts into the Google Docs. So you should now have across all the Google platform products actually access to a massive font library, mm. which was interesting as the fact that you can easily include, they actually make the interface very simple where you can select the font you like, you can put some sample text down, you can select the font, and they actually give you the, the, the header codes that you put into your own HTML pages to That's now use cool. that font. So basically in your style sheet, you can point yeah. to the font. You can now point, point to the to font, two, and yeah. Two, two type fonts and include it as part of your website, which in the old days was always an issue, but now you're relying on all the Google caching service to deliver the font to your users. So this might go somewhere, I don't know, but it, it was just cool, and it's a very nice interface. Yeah, and one of the things uh, I know the 
somebody else was mentioning, I'm not going to mention who they were, um, that it doesn't auto add these things to your docs automatically. So if you do your font drop down, you have your normal ones, you're not going to always find that when you do it in most other apps, you get totally overloaded. Um, so with this one, it doesn't do it. And then you can select to add these for yes. your docs going forward, which is very nice. Yeah. So you can then find the font that you well, like. One thing that that's when, th when, I, when I went and looked at this, the one font that I found missing there is Roboto, oh, the so font in good. Android. I, yeah. I haven't been able to find it yet. I'll go look again. Maybe someone else has added it, or maybe Google added it. I was it. Too, uh, it's that's disappointing. Was, I don't know what I was looking for, just for the fun of it. But the web interface is really worth looking at. It's at www.google.com forward slash web fonts. Because it actually, it's a nice take on how to actually pick the font you want. Because they not only give you the standard search type of things, you can also say that you want a thick line font and actually say, give me a font and you can actually, and it filters down and gives mm. you so many fonts it's got a thick line or has got a, a, a tilt to it. Or it's, it's very That's nice. nice. That's nice. very cool. We, so we, we need the two together, actually. Google Docs with the access to this type of font library is going to be interesting. But I'm sure that Google will roll out the same font library to the other applications. Question, I don't know if you're going to be honest. Can you download the font to host it yourself? I actually did see there's a way that you can package, and then and there was, but I didn't actually go that far down. Um, and it's not so much that I mind hosting it, but like I know I use jQuery quite a bit, which is hosted on the servers. But you know, I use this a lot for my own development. So I, I, I like keeping local. So if I have no internet, I can still play and test. Well, and it would be nice. I, I, it would be nice, very nice that they are providing this. I just said it would be nice if they do provide me a download. Well, if you go to where you actually select and then um, pick the uh, to, to put the code into your own page, that is a, a URL that you can then use on your. I mean, you can sure you can download from there. But I think they would prefer that you stay on their service because I'm not sure how the licensing works. Yeah, no, 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 I know that. This is more just for dev. Um, what what I've just been notified of is they don't just allow anybody to upload new fonts, which makes sense because not all fonts are actually free. Mm -hmm. But what Google is supporting, uh, they do support Kickstarter projects to create new free fonts. Okay, very really cool. cool. Very nice. That's very nice. So yeah, well, have a look at it. I think it's a nice. Uh, and, and, okay, well, anyway, go segmenting from this into Google Docs. <laughs> <laughs> Research tab. I don't see the point of this. <laughs> Neither do I. Anybody used this yet? Not I yet. I saw it did pop up when I opened the doc today yeah, for the show notes. And I'm like, what are you doing open? Get out of my way. I just remember Google had this research service, which I've never used. We use Scholar, I think, if I remember mm, right. No. Very useful as a university student. So Ooh. it's more just maybe... To me, it looked like embedding Google search into Google That's Docs. That's exactly what it is. I have other tabs for when I want to search. Where it might have worked, though, quite nicely is on tablets. Uh, yeah, but you can switch Except between tabs on tablets as well. So. Yeah, but on, on tablets, Android tablets have a dedicated Google Drive app, which is different from the web view of Google Google Drive or Google Docs. Mm. So you don't actually see that in Google Drive no, just I, yet I'm because actually the app has more when I'm on my iPad. Because have you ever switched between tabs on an iPad? Yeah, it's not fun. It it's reloads the whole page. So now it's all built into one page, so you can highlight and copy and paste. Um, so that's one place I think you might. Bear in mind, it. we are power users, and we think from somebody that actually is battling with, I mean, you see them a lot, um, managing one view. So now they can at least, maybe this is for younger people. And also, look, uh, I understand the utility somewhat of having, you know, your notes, your research notes, even mm -hmm. though, I mean, it's really not a research, it's a search. <laughs> There's no re-needed, it's just a search and search results. Um, but so you can go, cool, and, you know, here's information you know, here's a source that I want to use in this document, but you don't want it in the main document. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll... Well, let's see. Yeah. One of the cool things that the mixer points out <laughs> is that you can drag a, uh, a picture from the research tab directly into the document. So you can do stuff like that. So the That's mixer nice. says that it uses that. That's it likes good. the feature. Okay. <laughs> That's the, they, is in the, they use that in the collective. We can um, use that, yes. Um, so th then, as I said, once again, that would also be nice for the tablet. Mm. Um, so you, maybe. I, I just don't think I'll use my There's, day there's something there. They're, they're definitely onto something. Testing something. Right? Yes. <clears throat> Apparently, Google can now also, since we're speaking very Google. Uh, well, let's talk it, Google. How can it teach me a new language? <laughs> this, is not this is not Google per se. It's an extension for Chrome. Okay. Which uh, you install? But it's for Translate, right? Written. I, I believe by? it uses it uses Translate, uh, or it might yes. So it uses those services. 
um, and it doesn't translate a whole page. So if I go to a foreign page, say a page in German, then Google actually has the little drop down thing at the top that says, this page is in German. Would you like to translate it? Yes, and then it translates the whole page. This looks at the page, whatever you're, you're looking at or reading, and then it translates a bit, a section, and you can change the, uh, there's a slider for it. So you can say that you're a noob at this new language, you're an expert. So I've set mine to noob, set it to, I want to learn German, and now it takes some of the most commonly used words and phrases, and it translates those from English into German. So as I'm reading, I'm reading English, 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 and then suddenly there's German in the middle of what I'm reading. And it's highlighted a little, and you can click on it to get the English back to see what it actually means. That's so actually in this way, clever, then, yeah. then, then you, can, you, you won't necessarily become fluent in the language, but you learn to read it. And if you then dig a little deeper, then maybe you can learn to speak it. So it, it's helpful because also in this way, it's directly part of my daily, of what I'm doing daily. Yeah. As I'm searching for stuff, as I'm reading stuff, it's being translated and I'm just And you know, your brain's also learning a little word here, a little word Exactly, a little background. bit at a time. And eventually, it'll just, I'll just scan over all of it, not even realizing that I'm reading a different language. Then I can push up the level. So it's a really good extension. Cool. I hope, hope, hope it helps. Yeah. Uh, not quite. Uh, cheaper artificial leaves. Um, mimic photosynthesis for practical solar power. So I had no way to segue that. I, I try to think anyway, any <laughs> idea how to take away from Well, I'm sure Google is working on a project for like to save energy and all that stuff. But yeah, energy are, saving. Um, I know they're doing a lot of energy stuff and they, they're doing a lot of hydro and stuff. More to save the money uh, because they think they run huge data centers which use yep, they do. huge quantities of power and if mm. they can reduce... And cooling. Um, it, it, which they're you already know, trying to save on the power, cooling. Score. Yes. You probably spend more on cooling than power. Think about it. Well, the, well you, you need the power, the power for the cooling. From so it's been <laughs> no. no you, but the power requirements for the cooling systems is probably more than, than the, the power requirements. Than, yes, than for true. everything so else. That, that, that possibly. What, what they already do is they push it. It's not really, their data centers, from what I understand, aren't human habitable so much. You can go in there, but it's not a pleasant experience. So they push it up as far as they can without letting stuff just die. And when people do need to go in there, then well, they actually, can. in fact, they they work out the the, the, the what's the pretty optimal point, uh, where I would, basically yeah. when it's costing them more for new servers compared to the power. So if they can save money on power, mm. and that money if effectively is equal to the amount of servers dying, then they found the optimal temperature. And you can only do this when you when you're doing enough data centers, <laughs> and where you you don't care when your servers die. And that's, that's what Google does. They yes. buy servers but it's very and cool. components and whatever on the chip. Anyway, uh, artificial leaves. Yeah, uh, artificial leaves aren't exactly um, brand spanking new. Mm -hmm. They've been, been making or they've been experimenting with this type of thing. The problem that they've had with it is that it's quite expensive uh, because the catalyst that they use in that is platinum. And obviously, I mean, you've seen the platinum price. It's uh, it's quite high. Yeah, yes. thousand. What's it now? Four hundred. Someone correct me. A couple of uh, you know, I'm, over a thousand dollars. I'm aware of platinum price at the moment. Yes, it is fantastic. So what these guys have done, you what what the solar leaf does is it simulates or emulates okay, photosynthesis. Just, just to add something here, this is solar leaf, not for oxygen. But for it does create oxygen oh, because it? that's okay. part of the part All of right. the process. But the whole point behind it is to actually yes create hydrogen, which you can then use to uh, put into fuel power. cells and yeah. to then produce power from hydrogen fuel cells. So what they've done to make this less expensive is instead of platinum, they're using a nickel molybdenum zinc compound for the catalyst. Okay, cool. what? Ex it's in instead of platinum, one element. It's nickel, molybdenum, zinc. What's as molybdenum? A I can't remember. I, I but remember it's another typing on my iPhone to someone at some stage. I say iPhone specifically, not smartphone, because Dan, you autocorrect. <laughs> um, I, I was I was typing holy moly, and it autocorrected to holy molybdenum. Okay. <laughs> I, I, can I say that Android does the same? Android's work well. No. iPhones work because iPhone you hit space, it auto types it. Yes, I turn that off on all my smartphones now. Which is also irritating because I mistype on the touch screen a lot. Anyway, <laughs> there's no way to win. But cool. moving, mo moving back cool. to that, yeah. Yeah, so, so just what the researchers note is that uh, these, these elements are abundant on Earth, which then obviously brings down the cost considerably and then hopefully um, makes it useful.
yeah, um, cool. will we'll actually make it, you know, Can't bring it in a, a little more to, to mainstream. I hope it doesn't impact South Africa's platinum <laughs> market much. There's still well, a market if, for that. If they need enough of this, what, what they're actually doing is they're saying using less platinum, you, we can make more. So it's not so much we're going to buy less platinum, we're just going to have more devices for the same amount of platinum. The human being will always still use platinum for jewels. Yes. Yeah, but and it is still a very system. nice catalyst. I guess, I guess. Or your cars. Yeah, yeah. High-end cars use it uh, still to use get platinum, the yeah. correct carbon. Mm. Uh, not the other thing. It's in the exhaust, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, right. Anyway, because you want to get... Platinum in the exhaust. Correct. I think no it's actually well it's, it's part of that to get the optimum burning thing and basically to reduce the carbon output it's not necessarily in the exhaust <laughs> but it's in the exhaust system somewhere yes. um don't talk to me about cars talk to me about pcs but <laughs> i know there's platinum in the exhaust system yeah I'm, I'm going to move this on from, from uh things that use light to, to things light that make light that well a, done that was a good <laughs> there we go these are awesome um they basically somebody's been making lightsabers that use a real laser um, and effectively they've taken the most powerful commercially have you seen these green lasers mm, i have one they they are actually quite powerful so a if you are going to is this one of those super lasers yeah yeah yes. apparently if you shine them up at a there's like a huge thing if you shine them up at airplanes and stuff you can blind the pilots yeah um, also they say you can actually burn wood with them i haven't tried that um, mm. Well, this specific one, I don't know with yours, Man uh, but fire. this is the, the most powerfully commercially available, legally, you can legally buy laser. In certain places, um, they are illegal in some others. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to this, they've then attached like a light saber stick. And in that, what they've got is they've got a magnet uh, at the top that will move up and down uh, in this like clear tube. So when you push the button, the magnet moves up and you see that lightsaber movement. <laughs> Does it make the noise? <laughs> Uh, I don't see, know. In the video, is, they had the noise, but I don't know if it does it naturally. That is very important. I, I'm sure you could add a little, a little sound module in there. The big problem is they, they show this and they say in the video, it's very disappointing. They show two guys fighting and all the rest, and they go, "Cool, I want this." And they say, um, "Please don't use this to fight with ever, and don't hit anything with this because it's a really dangerous laser and it'll break, and then you might." Well, not kill someone, but at least damage them in some way. Yeah, yeah. So you have this really cool lightsaber that you can do nothing with. <laughs> Well, even if it, if it were a real lightsaber, you, it's also not a toy. It cuts things and people and off hands and things. So, but so can I chop off Luke's hand with this? That's the question. If Luke is a little snowman, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, no. What okay. piece of wood? Well, yeah, except you're going to well, have to... Like, you're going to wait a while. Well, no, the, the problem <laughs> is for the lightsaber, but you actually have to take the tubing off. And at that point, you then just got the laser. So how it works is you put it tubing in and the light then basically gets diffracted through to give you that proper look. That glow. Yes. Okay. Uh, but look, it's cool. And the videos are cool. I just like the way the magnets move. move. So basically you turn on the, the magnets. It's got that real slidey movement. Okay. Uh, from from a really, another really old uh, lightsaber thing into something that's 20 years old at the moment. Wolfenstein. Those were the days. I remember playing this. Good times. And you can now play this in your browser. Uh, some of the guys have released it as a uh, basic. And you checked? Was it uh, what yeah, was it's it HTML5. HTML5. I've only ever played the shareware version of this. Um, Episode like, one. W one of the things somebody asked me and I was like, I, I don't know is how accurately have they ported this? Does it have the, All the visual secrets. errors? Oh, oh no, it's got the secrets. Oh, okay. We tested that. One of the guys says, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, here's the secret room. And I still John, remembers. Yes, he wow. still remembers. Um, so it had that. Um, the main thing is, I know it's very famous for having very, because you didn't have correct floating point uh, mathematics in it, there's certain ones, if you stand at certain angles, that the wall suddenly move out. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know, you know, I don't know which stand to test that. So I, I don't know if it has those errors in it. Yeah, it's yeah. like if you recreate Pac-Man, you have to break it at the last level. I don't know if you know like no, this um, piece of trivia. At the, the, there is no last level to Pac-Man, but you can play Pac-Man to the point where uh, uh, a counter overflows, and so the level distorts. And you can still play the level, um, but you can't see anything. You have to do it by memory. <laughs> so you have to memorize. How do you memorize what the level looks like without being able to see it? Well, it's the same level. Remember the Pac-Man oh, okay. the same level over and over again. But you have to memorize and, and sort of go by feel. How fast are you going? 
And this is almost like those guys where they do the bl- uh, blindfolded Rubik's cubes. Yes, this is sort of like that. It's, it's all does in with you know feeling the force. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Well, you know, feel the movement. <laughs> anyway, uh, Libre, non DRM, open standards HD. An format. open HD video standard for all... free culture and independent film. So, the, the creator of this got a little tired with uh, Blu ray and its DRM. Uh, he's trying to release uh, his own independent film. Yeah. And um, he wants to be able to give people who pay him for it. Uh, you know, for a collector's edition. He wants to be able to send them something in a box. So something like a DVD or a Blu-ray. Something that gives you the best quality, but without all the DRM. And of a limited size, because that's the main thing, why you want a decent codec and not giving it in raw format. Yes, yes. Well, well people need to be able to actually you know, watch it. Yeah. Well, well, what's wrong with putting it on a flash like disk? An MPEG. You could do it USB 3 stick, there we go. Exactly, but now you need a, a decent format for it. What are yeah. you going to be putting it in? What's wrong with normal NKV with, with X264 encoding? H264. X264. It's, it's not an open format, so you not have to pay about for it. This. So he's trying to get around DRM, okay. around patents. He wants something a bit more open. So what he's now trying, it's a Kickstarter project, by the way. Uh, the, the physical media that he'll be distributing this on is uh, flash memory cards, SDHC flash memory okay. cards. This, it's not intended for... You know, he's not trying to revolutionize the market, but he's trying to get something out there for content creators who want to give their paying customers the best uh, experience and, and the uh, best product. I like it because it's, it's legal. You, you're not circumventing it, doing just encoding exactly. H.264 without paying the license royalties. Mm. Um, it's always good to support things that are, are going in that direction. Yeah. I like what he's doing. And what he's suggesting, uh, the video file format will use the MKV container, yeah. VP8 for video, and FLAC or Vorbis for the audio, which is... Uh, Isn't this already available, though? Can't s- you already do this? Similar to something to, to WebM, but it's a little bit more permissive. So all that, that's the thing. He was pitching this idea for a year for creating this open HD video standard, you know, doing talks, doing everything, and no one actually picked it up and just did it. Oh, yeah. So now he's doing it himself, and that's why he started the Kickstarter project, because now he has to abandon his own project. Is, is there something wrong with just using you know, normal OG? OG video, OG audio in the OG container? Will that give the highest quality? Maybe that's what he's. Well, look, that, I do know they say it. that the web. Now, now, now he's, one of the things he's using the VP8 codec, which is mm-hmm. supposed which to is be an X264 competitor, Sorry, which VP8? is X. Is the, 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 co- the video codec that got bought by uh, Google and has been released as the WebM codec? Okay. Yeah. Now, which is supported is by Firefox and Opera. If I'm not mistaken, yes, and Google, obviously. Well, yes. I know OGV, so is, is Firefox and Opera actually now supporting the WebM? Right? Yes. Mm. Okay, I, I didn't know that. That yes, changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and Internet Explorer and Safari don't. So Internet Explorer does if you've installed it as one of the codecs being supported. Okay, uh, so is a way. So, but it's not natively supported. So uh, another thing, uh, the format uh, that he's suggesting is optimized for fixed media rather than download. So it's intended to be put on a SDHC flash memory card not as a download. WebM, I think, is more for downloading purposes. That's what, what it's optimized for. What audio codex he wants to use? Uh, either FLAC, so uh, free lossless, or OG. Uh, not OG, Vorbis. How many channels do you get out of those? I think you, I don't know, I think you can get the same ones, but I know what somebody was saying is, one, I can't remember if it's FLAC or OG, Vorbis. Mm-hmm. Um, they're actually going, he was going to, like, MP3 is apparently the way that the optimization is very optimized for audio, uh, for uh, music high frequency stuff and not very optimized for voice. And I've realized this when I'm watching TV shows, the voices tend to be quite softer and then suddenly the music goes and then I have to quickly drop the sound on watching these uh, encoded with MP3. Oh. And he says, he explains this, because it's optimized for this, they basically stripped a lot of the, the volume and the sound out and the frequencies out from the, the voice parts where OG and FLAC, one of those is actually more optimized for voice. So if you have a speaking movie, it's actually better to use some of the Speaks other codecs is the codec that's Speaks, used yes, by brand. TeamSpeak and stuff, yeah. Uh, because it's optimized, so you still get the compression, but it's optimized in the correct frequencies for voice. Okay, but MP3 also only supports two channels. That's uh, why I'm asking you question. Sure? Yeah, well. Okay. Um, MP3 I'm, is FLAC, two FLAC, I know, supports more than that. I, I don't okay. want to put a number on it, but it's, it, I think it's eight and over okay. um, channels at least. Um, and that's where the ACCs and those AAC, of, yeah, exactly. Mm. AAC is, is because it's more than two channels, it's mm. multi channel. Yeah. Well, good luck to him. I mean, how far is he on his project? Uh, on the Kickstarter page, 
He needs $19,000. So far, he's got 12636 from what I can see. 17 days to go. And yeah, like all Kickstarter projects, he has things ranging from $1 to, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to scroll forever, to <laughs> like $5,000. And, you know, offering all sorts of fantastic stuff that you can get. And, of course, he's offering this video format for content creators. Well, let's see what happens. Mm. Mm. Um, I just talked about Kickstarter, and then I saw one joking, and I can't remember which site it was from or who did it. But it was saying, you know, in modern days with Kickstarter, as time is going by, it's getting harder to get it. You've got to do better video oh, yes. and, you know, better options of that. So he's starting to a Kickstarter project to start a Kickstarter project. I think it's, it was, was that, an, it was either an oatmeal or an XKCD. I think, I, for some reason, I want to it's say... It's an XKCD. Oat, it was XKCD, I yes. want to say oatmeal. Um, and it's just brilliant. It's like, you know, if you, if you donate enough, you'll get told what the Kickstarter project will be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just brilliant. It was, it was quite good tongue in cheek, but... It, yeah. Yeah. Um, feedback from the IRC, um, Mickey D says Flack has eight channels. Okay. But Forbes? Uh, since we are talking about Kickstarter project, Diaspora, one of the first times I heard about Kickstarter. Yeah, indeed. And, and it's the second best Kickstarter project to date. Yeah, uh, and probably, one, probably and behind the smartwatch. And one, of the, and one of the ones that's tanked the hardest. I th no, I well, it's I not tanked yet. Double Fine was the highest, and then the Pebble Watch was higher. Hmm. So and then I would diaspora say would diaspora be third. What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, diaspora. The thing about diaspora, if you look at this uh, with with a historian's hat on, it, it it's, that makes it very interesting. It's basically Facebook, right? That, that was the well. Actually, it's more like Google Plus, but it was conceived before Google Plus launched. Yes, and it was conceived as a Facebook competitor. So, in light of Facebook. You know, the, all the stuff happening at the time around Facebook owning your data and being unable to close your account, being unable to get your data back out. Uh, Facebook saying that they will not delete your data uh, and, and necessarily. They were, they were changing the rights and making things public that before was private. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of sentiment about this pretty much when we started the show. Yeah, uh, it's about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, the first time, one of, one of the first times I came on the show was, um, was right after I had actually started my own Diaspora node. Um, and uh, one of the previous uh, hosts, was Barry, also running one. yeah, was was actually still owns I think Diaspora.co.za. I think it's defunct now. Um, but I mean, there was a lot of excitement around this project, um, and then Google killed it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that nothing happened in it. First of all, it was written in, in Ruby. R Ruby. I don't know if it's still written in that. I don't know nearly enough about the project anymore to, um, to be able to speak about it authoritatively. But I don't see why they would have changed languages. I doubt. So it. why would these guys still try and launch? Um, because it, it, is, it is still that, different. That people have paid for it. They need to launch. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And, and it still has some stuff to offer. Firstly, it's distributed. It's not hosted in one person's data center. Um, it lets you get your data out. It lets, uh, it lets you have, rather than one type of ID, so you, know, you have a, a Google account and an ID that you've registered, or a Facebook ID, uh, or, which is just an email address and stuff, but... Um, or, or more particularly like a Twitter identifier. These guys let you be, you know, anything at anything, you know, like, like an email address. Yeah. So Look, your diaspora name becomes like an email address. I, I think uh, the one that Barry had was you would have username at diaspora.co.za. Exactly. And mine was uh, whatever your username wanted to be at facetwitbuzzer.com. Well, the, the classic example now is with Google Plus. You Sorry, and we? Facebook Face buzzer. buzzer. I was making fun of everything that, because the Google social network at the time was Buzz, Buzz. which sucked as well. But <laughs> it, it, in the examples now with Google Apps accounts, you can actually have a Google Plus account but linked to your work profile. Mm -hmm. um, this was the same, but you could do it whatever domain you had. <clears throat> it was yeah. interesting. It just yeah. The, what, the, one of the big killers is the technical expertise required to just get it working. So for Diaspora to work, um, and, and I'm on the mailing list, but I haven't actually checked today's mails, so I don't know uh, what their plan is. But for it to really work, they're gonna have to launch in a way that's easy for other people to use. A, and B, you know, that's somehow different and sexy. Um, how do you compete with Twitter and Facebook, let alone Google Plus, which is struggling to gain market share? Um, you know, you've got to offer something other than Better. your data is portable. People, do, like if it's something that the DRM and Diablo has shown us, it's that people do not care about freedom. 
if, if you give them a good enough product, th they won't care. Yeah, exactly. Um, people are willing to, exactly, people are willing to trade freedom for uh, convenience. And I think it's not. Oh, no, I mean, I, I don't disagree. Right now, Google Plus is battling because where's everybody? Facebook. Facebook. So why would people move? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I mean. People so will they need trade. to offer something completely different, something that people want, something that people network. need. No, ma maybe, maybe, maybe it is a social network. But, but that, something that, offers certain that has of features that we can't even think of yeah. the and selling, that we really want. The selling want. point of we're not Facebook is no longer good enough because Twitter is not Facebook. Because Identica, Google. I don't know how many of you even remember that. Yeah, I remember uh, a little um, bit. Yeah, uh, which, is, which used to be like based on the Konica, which is now been renamed to status.net. Um, it's just not enough of a selling point anymore because there are alternatives to Facebook. And plus, even people who are like, oh, this is wonderful, it's not Facebook, they use Facebook. Yeah. Um, and at the time that they initiated this, they had the option, they had the potential to do it if they got enough momentum and got out there quickly enough. Th and that was the thing they needed the to get out quick enough. They released it initially and, and they weren't just out were lacking. Yeah, quick and, enough. and the thing is, I think they told themselves that if they did this in Ruby, they'd be able to iterate and get it out fast enough. And it was the wrong move. I think Ruby was the wrong technological choice. Well, at the problem, look, Ruby's a lot more mature now. So at that point, it wasn't mature enough. So you had to install like 20 million different packages. Secondly, all, a lot of your cheap free hosting out there is PHP and MySQL. Yes. So that's what you need to... And, they, and they were using a NoSQL database, whose name I don't remember right now, and, um, and Ruby. Yeah. So, however, I mean, that said, Twitter was built on Ruby, might even still be built on Ruby. And um, uh, I remember that being a thing, you know, when Twitter collapsed under you know the first big influx of users it received the Not, whale yeah the fail whale, whale, whale the whale i haven't seen that in years yeah oh i've uh, I've, I've seen it on occasion but you're just yeah. not you're just not on twitter when uh, number one you're not on twitter anymore <laughs> number two you should try twitter when there's a flux of information coming through then the guys are still getting the fail whale yeah yeah they just can't tweet about it but <laughs> yeah but um, i remember that being a thing uh when when uh, and it wasn't right after launch it, it at some at one stage twitter just took off uh, and at that point, people said, you know, this is a case study in how to try and scale Ruby. Um, cool. and, and they managed eventually. I don't know if they switched away from Ruby in the end. Well, a lot of the things with the scaling and stuff, I think, is also the DB side of it. So they went a much, I know they, they I think they migrated to a better NoSQL DB, which is just a key value store. So pretty much the Ruby yes. is just becoming a thoroughfare for the DB. Uh, you know, it's basically they're storing the, I'm not going to go into NoSQL. No yeah, 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 yeah. Mongo, Mongo, on. Mongo, by the way, was the name of the database. Oh, they the used Mongo. Yeah, okay. it was the name of the database used by Diaspora. Mongo is cool. Yes. Unfortunately, it's not MySQL. So, they're, it's, they're, they're, they're apparently, they've come along, along a lot. It's, in old days, they, they weren't so good. They improved significantly. No, I mean, the fact is, is that if I go and buy a shared hosting package from Hetzner tomorrow, you won't get Mongo. I'm not getting Mongo. Yeah. I'm not even getting Postgres. True. Which is, in my view, better than mine. Anyway, yes. I'm moving us on. This is getting uh, a bit too technical. It's never too technical. I this is Let's Talk Geek. Postgres is better, but yes. we can move on now. I prefer Postgres. <laughs> this doesn't do sharding if you want to get into more technical. And that's my big problem, which is I, I know we're... What? <laughs> uh. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll go... Very quick one, sharding. Okay, uh, most DBs, when you want to scale them and get them bigger, your MySQL was in Postgres. Is. And you want to add it where you can store more unique data. So this is not replication or the rest of it. You've got to get a bigger server. So they call that horizontal scaling. If you want to, ver ah, sorry, that's vertical scaling. If you want a horizontal scale, basically I want to put another server down, another server down, and I must replicate the data and work across all servers. So I'm storing so I get same read but uh, same write but better reads. That's called sharding. So I split the data up across multiple servers. There's your keyword for this week. Sharding. Sharding. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, th by the way, uh, it's like two segues, Rift, the servers on in Rift are called shards. Uh, and B, a uh, comment from the IRC, since we're talking about social networks, is that General Motors has pulled their apparently $10 billion ad account from Facebook because it doesn't work. Advertising on Facebook. I'm not sure it was $10 billion. Doesn't work. I, I think uh, you may have too many zeros there. $10 million. Yeah. Yeah, they said maybe 10 million. But yes, sure they did pull it. Ten, but 10 million. I think it's 10 still million. significant. Yeah. And I they said the return these, was not good enough. It all depends what you're advertising. Social things work. Uh, Zynga. 
Are they advertising? Do they need to advertise? Well, effectively, they did advertise to get enough people. So, so certain things will work very well. And this whole thing about one platform being the perfect platform for everything and working, no. False. False. Mm. Doesn't work. Uh, Google would be more generic, I would imagine. 10 million, CZT, thank you. Because you'll be searching for a topic and then you see what you're doing. But Facebook being social, once, n nothing is ever a perfect fit for everything. Yeah. Hence why we have MySQL, Postgres, <laughs> MongoDB, Couch. No DB, SQL. Uh, why we have Merck, Hadoop, BMW, with HBase, Reno, <laughs> Pijo, yes. Ferrari, Lamborghini. And that's just how Aston the world Martin. works. Lamborghini would work perfectly. <laughs> anyway, okay. moving from that to this lovely phone that Jan has, which actually is very sexy. This is the HTC One X. So. Um, you can't. You might not be able to see it from all the way over there, and we're not allowed to zoom because we break the camera when we do that. Um, so, but uh, as you can see, uh, I got the the white one to review. Solid body. Uh, the, the, there's no back cover. No cover comes off. What's the other option in color? Uh, Blackish. I'm colorblind. It's like a dark blue or something. Yeah, kind. I think it's a dark blue. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ooh, would have. Nice. I, I would have preferred that. Yeah. Um, so how you get a SIM card in is there's a SIM tray uh, over here, which you eject with a pin very similar to that of, uh, of the iPhone. iPhone. Uh, Does it have an SD card? No, no, no SD card slot. And the battery is also integrated. Yeah. So, so no removable battery either. Yeah. So what's the life? Uh, we don't know yet. So I'm gonna. There, there have been criticisms up around the battery life of the device. So that's something I'm gonna be testing thoroughly uh, to see. You know. Uh, to see, maybe some people have just been unlucky. Yeah. Um, you know. You got that phone today. Today. Mm -hmm. Break it down. Break some specs down. All what right. are we looking at here? So we're looking at a 1.5 gigahertz quad core processor in the global model. <laughs> Nvidia Tegra 3. 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. I don't know the, the, the RAM specs off the top of my head. I think it's one gig. Is it a gig, not mm -hmm. two? All right. So um, storage uh, is, I think, 32 gig flat. Doesn't matter what model you buy. Oh, I mean, it doesn't have different storage models. Um, Sense 4.0, that's HEC's thing now. Um, Which they say they've scaled down from uh, what they did previously. Yeah, uh, it runs Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, and so with running Ice Cream Sandwich, they say that they've put a lot of effort into their camera. So you've got a camera that works a lot like the one in the Google Nexus. There's no shutter lag. Uh, they say, by the way, that the camera on the back here. Um, what do you mean with no shutter lag? So when you press the button, You push the button, it takes a photo. That yeah. is so damn important. But it Recently, still takes time for, the for the camera to load. Yeah, so that's another yes. thing that that's another thing they showed me today is that when you load the camera, which by the way is a shortcut by default, that they say it loads if you tap if you actually hit it, it loads in 0.7 seconds. Done. Um, that's a lot better. Yeah, and, I and when you take a photo, it's 0.2 seconds. I that's still want to have a bit where there's a photo button on the outside. So yeah. I go, oh, this time I want to take a photo and go yeah. click. Because right now what you've got to do still, like you have to do on most of these devices, you have to hit the power button, which is all the way over the top. That's something I really like about the Samsung devices, is having the power button on the right so that I can just push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to reach up, push the button, and then you can, then there's these icons, like for those of you sensed would know exactly how it will work. You grab an icon from the lock menu, you drag it into the circle, and then it launches that app. So you can. Yeah, but that's a HTC Sense thing. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. Been, so that's since the previous version. You can launch the Sense. camera from the lock screen, but that's still. Uh, okay, it's uh, still I, I going know, to the lock yes, screen. Yes, but a hardware not. button that you push and hold, like Windows Phone does it, and like some Android, uh, obscure Android phones with hardware buttons do it, is the best my, way my, to My example where I have a photo, problem, yes. and yes, it's really bad, uh, is wanting to take a photo of a cat. <laughs> so it's in the perfect position. You, I know it's bad. It <laughs> crazy cat lady. You, you pick up the phone and you want to take the and in, in that thing of trying to unlock it and take this thing and open the app and push the button. By that point, the cat's going, "Ooh, what are you doing?" And it gets up and like, "Yeah, yeah, too late." And so that's kind of what they say I'll they're trying to address. Tim. Kids are the same. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. I want to be able to pick it up, take it. So I don't mind if it takes like a second. But I don't want to have lots of movement while I'm doing it. So can you, would you think you'll be able to hit the lock button, click and drag the camera no, in there no. and go shoot? No. I need to go snap. Okay. Then get like a I, muck and drag. Get a, get a cyber shot or something. Yeah, but I don't, I, phone, I have my phone because it's always with me. I want to be able to do this with my phone. I just want to have some way. So override one of the buttons, do something and I push it and immediately goes Hardware to camera button. There is the nothing. Camera, we, we like arguing about the camera. I know. And if you're so buying a phone, phone for the camera. Storage. Storage. 32. 32. That, uh, that screen on there looks pretty Yeah, so the screen, nice. 4.7 inches. 4.7 inches. Yeah. Um, IPS panel. 
It's it's SLCD, but it's IPS. Mm. Um, SLCD, LCD, yes, whatever. Um, the S is somewhere um, <laughs> in the LCD. Um, uh, IPS stands for in-plane yes. switching. That's what no you... No S in LCD. The, n n no, you get super LCD, though. Ah, uh, okay. Well, okay. LCD, something with an S at the end. Um, IPS is the kind of technology that you'll find in your Apple products, in your television displays. It is... In your transformers. It is fantastic. It is. IPS, if in any any uh, display of file will tell you if you've got a choice and the IPS is the same price as something else, you know, as like yeah, a... IPS. Okay, so in, in the display, in, like from the reviews I've done of devices, if I were to pick one display, it would be, uh, the, the big battle would be between IPS and Super AMOLED Plus. Okay. That would be the big fight. Yeah, yeah. So they changed the screen, they gave you one solid body, the underlying, okay, and they gave you a good CPU. Other than that, we still got the same Wi-Fi technology. We still got the same Bluetooth technology. It hopefully makes calls. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It might not be the same Bluetooth technology. They might have um, the, that. Sounds, I don't have the spec sheet open in front of me right now, but it so could it might be, be the new one. It might could be, be what four? Yeah. Um, so I'll have to double check. Okay. I mean, is that? I have to ask. How important is that really? I have not, not used to. Bluetooth on my phone in a year and a half. Okay, I use mine every day. I use mine to connect to my GPS. That's all I need it for. I, I have a Bluetooth headset that I use every day at work. But do you need Bluetooth but 4 to make that work? No. You see, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth 4 right. just helps with what? Power Battery consumption life, it? and, and quick, of, quicker connects. That I would like. Yes. I don't need the power consumption, but the quick those connect to me Off the top of my head, really those are the two cool. important yeah, things. Yeah. So, um, but uh, from the sounds of it, like what they really focused on in this device is the multimedia side of things. So, like the, the camera and the, the music player and Look, the Beats, Beats, Beats audio. audio built in. That's a sexy phone. I must say, it's, it's one of the first phones in a while that I'm... That really makes your heart go faster. I'm thinking that might be nice to get. Yeah. Now, I, I want to do a comparison between that and the Galaxy. Now, what, what I really like the about only the HTC one. devices is that the, the widgets and stuff that you get don't suck. Um, and I'm not going to say they're good, they just don't suck. On TouchWiz, the widgets suck. Yeah, they do. The built-in apps generally suck. Um, on Sony Ericsson, whatever that's called. The timescape, oh my that word. The timescape is terrible. Yeah, so I still don't like the HTC's built-in social networking widget thingy. I much prefer Peep. The, the third party stuff. Oh, Peep is junk. Um, <laughs> but still but, but um, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not like I'm going to throw this out completely. Some people can actually use it. <laughs> cool. M moving us along a bit. Um, <laughs> Samsung. I'm sorry. Last question. Where can I get it? You can get it at MTN. When? At the moment, right, right now. now, Vodacom. Uh, and then I got stock. Uh, the, they, um, well, the, they, they do. They there'll there'll be an article about this on my broadband uh, sometime during this week. Okay. Um, there has apparently never been a stock problem. What happens is that people walk into a store, and they ask for a device, and they say, "Sorry, we have no stock. We'll get new stock in June." And uh, like one guy ran to Hello Peter, and then MTN started saying, uh, started explaining, "No, no, no." They, they actually source stock for you from another branch. So there is stock. Like, it's just distributed all over the country. And so, like, big stores will run out quicker, or, or stores where, you know, more high-end customers buy will run out faster, and then they just have to get stock from someplace else. There's just, there seems to be a communication problem. Um, okay. So that they're saying there's no stock, but that's not necessarily true. Um, you just have to ask long and hard enough. Get me one. Yes, you okay. have to go, listen, I need one now, or I'm going to Vodacom next month. <laughs> kind of thing. Make a plan. Um, um, so just so you know, Vodacom has hinted at the fact that they're going to get this phone uh, in June, and um, HTC has confirmed that uh, the Vodacom is going to get the one, the S, and the V. Last question. Oh, the then, X, the S, and really, we cool. can go along. Um, the specials we spoke about last week, when it was last up to the fifteenth of May. Do you know what those? Did they get extended? Um, you're talking about the, it's up to the seventeenth of May. So it's up until tomorrow for three forty nine a month, seventy five megs. Ah, it's up to tomorrow. Mm. So at the moment, the way it looks, if you're buying on Vodacom, get a Galaxy Nexus. If you're buying on MTN, this is probably the one you want to be going for. Oh, screw it. This is a quad core. Yep. And, and I know for most people, don't care. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that would make that big a difference to me I right now. I care about the GPU because the Adreno GPUs on HTC devices have always sucked. So it's going to be good to, to play with the Tegra. It's got the fifth yes, core yeah. that should yeah, be yeah. better. Apparently there's issues with that, and that's part of what I want to investigate with the battery life. Okay. Uh, next sorry, yeah, sorry. sorry. There's something here I wrote quick news. Yes, quick news. That was me. 
The quick news is Samsung Galaxy S3 SA is launched, has, has received an SA launch date, 7 June 2012. Um, so it's really just a teaser. Uh, they didn't say where, when, or who, <laughs> or anything. They just said save the date, 7th of June, we're launching this bad boy. And I find this a little bit funny. The One X was announced before it and launched before it internationally. And yet we have a, an official solid date for this is launching in South Africa for the S3, but not for the One X. Well, the One X has launched an MTN, kind of. Yes, but they're getting it themselves. No, no, no. They, uh, MTN. Yes. They, uh, oh, are they actually getting it from Leaf? No. The way it works now is HTC deals direct with MTN and Vodacom. Uh, ATA and Celsi have to deal with Leaf. Um, don't ask me why. <laughs> this is just how it works. Um, so, uh, and, but, and what yeah, they, they said don't was have it's not exclusive state. to MTN. There's no exclusivity agreement. Mm -hmm. It's just that they said that MTN was very flexible. And so they launched on MTN when the window of opportunity presented itself. Walmart brought band compared the two devices. Absolutely. Before, before are you going to get one before the 7th of no. June? You're going to have to wait for that day. Mm. Yes. So we won't be able to get it before launch. You're going to have to wait until we've been able yeah, look, to review the two Wait until the 7th of June and waiting two, what's it, three weeks before you get your You're going to have to wait for the stock anyway. Just wait. It's, it's not a problem. Because you're going to have this phone for, for two years. Rather get the phone that's right. Unless your contract's expiring and, and you need to do it now. Contract has already expired. Wait three weeks. Switch <laughs> to prepaid. I hear they get great deals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, with that, we're just going to go into a kicker. Uh, it's something for you to watch. Is, is some guy testing out doing a webcast? And it's what not no, to do. No, you didn't listen. It sounds like he was getting irritated with his viewership, not understanding how to watch the live, how to download the show and watch the live. I, I'm sorry, I thought he was trying to show how to stream. So, no, 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 no. This, is a, this looks like a guy that's doing a podcast. He's a, he's a podcaster. His, and his, his viewers was, wasn't understanding how, so he's actually explaining. And then goes to the live section and hits the play button so he can watch his own live stream. But he was saying to somebody, shall we try this and play? <laughs> um, and just to explain sort of what happens is, is about a five second delay. So for those of you who aren't sound engineers. Um, and it works <laughs> just like if you ever put two mirrors together and you watch them all, all channel all the way down. Except this was doing this now with audio. Where it would just keep on playing backwards uh, over and over and looping everything. And as soon same. as the overlap started, the feedback hit. And, <laughs> just and, and then at that point, your ears. the dope got a bit wobbly, and he couldn't like pause it or stop it or do anything. He did eventually manage to do it, but it, he it, muted it. <laughs> yeah, he you eventually <laughs> gave up and just muted, muted it. it. He didn't try to pause it anymore. Uh, but it's quite quite, quite fun. It so is it's, funny. It's worth checking. <laughs> we with, unfortunately can't play it. No, <laughs> but it is no, down below. Um, yeah, it, it's, for, for it, those watching on YouTube, it's in the comment section, uh, just below the video yeah, in the yeah. doobly doo. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah. it will be up on the wiki as well. Yeah, yeah there, just a warning. There is standard American blasphemy. Um, I, I've, I've warned of that in the show notes. Hopefully, that makes it through to the to the rest of the show notes. Uh, so, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of OMGs, OMGs uh, from this guy. Cool. So, all right, with that, Harrit, where can we find you? Best place to look for me is about.me slash Hawkies Z-A. That's H-A-W-K-I-E-S-Z-A. Jan. I'm Jan Vizere on Twitter. I am a staff writer at mybroadband.co.za. You oh, can find my stuff there. The staff writer? Uh, a staff writer. <laughs> you know more than one? Yes, plenty of staff writers. Lots of them. Minions. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, you can just throw your vitriol my way. Yeah, all matter. the writing my broadband is done by. Yeah, no, you guys have got lots of guys. You know, yeah, not, not guys true, but yeah, no, and uh, you, that's basically it. I'm I'm on Google Plus as well, um, though I've not been able to really spend much time on the social networks of late. I am there though, and people are asking me questions on there. I am answering them as much as I can. Um, and if you want to pop me an email, my email address is on the My Broadband website on my articles as well. So, Cool. Johan? Uh, find me at my blog, blog.who-else.co.za. Right. Uh, myself, Tim Hawk. Um, you can find me on not very many places, but you can watch me on uh, uh, wiki.letstalknetwork.tv. You can see all the different shows there. Uh, you can also then go and like all our shows on Facebook, YouTube, you can't like the shows on Facebook, but you can like us on Facebook, Google Plus, uh, we pretty much every, everywhere, just go check it out. Um, and with that, thank you for watching. Thank, thank you for watching. Uh, watch you guys next week.